Hey class, it's Bill Berry with a week 10 demo using array lists and collection based sorting. We are close to the end, so this is one of our last new topics and it's cool stuff, so let's jump in and see what we're going to cover today. First is <clears throat> we're going to look into array lists. We have seen using arrays that we can do a lot of neat stuff, but and arrays have certain advantages. They are extremely fast. It's easy to index items and immediately jump to that item in the list, and it is extremely fast regardless of the size of the list, which is great. Uh, arrays can uh, can do a lot for us, as we've seen. We can make arrays of objects, we can make arrays of, of simple data types, etc. But they do have some downsides, like a fixed size. If we run out of array space and we need one more item, we have to create a different array and copy the other array over. That's not great. And we don't have a lot of methods with arrays. We sort of are, are stuck using some fairly standard stuff. And if we want to sort, we can do that, but we do the work ourselves. If we want to insert something and move everything down, we have to do that work ourselves. So we're going to look at a new data structure, an object that is a collection type, and a collection, in this case, the, the specific object that we're looking at is called an array list. An array list has a lot of flexibility. There isn't a fixed size. You can add and delete items at will. You can do a lot of other common things that you may want to do, searching and sorting and all kinds of things, and those things are fairly free. So another thing you can do is iterate through their items and say, hey, hand me each one in turn. Uh, there's just many things that an array list can do, and your chapter will get into some of that. We're not going to cover all of those here, but uh, we're going to sort of get a quick introduction and use an array list in a simple program. Now, following up on that, one of the things that may lead us to that or, or make us uh, excited about an array list is the fact that it is extremely easy to do these operations on it, methods like sorting. Now, that is free to us. It's fairly easy to do, but not completely free. We have to do our part, and this is one of those things that we're following up with interfaces, because as we've talked about in the past, interfaces are great. You can implement them, and then, as I've mentioned, sometimes some magic can happen based on our implementation. And this is one of those cases where the sorting magic can happen if we implement a certain interface and we take care of a couple of methods, really one method, and the rest is super easy. So this is a great example of an interface that exists. We don't have to create it. We just implement it and we use it and it makes magical things happen. So it's a great example. So our desire here is going to be to take a simple program that creates simple objects and we're going to walk through making a collection of them using an array list and doing the sorting and all of that stuff. Very cool and let's jump in and get started. First of all, here's a super simple program. It has a person class. The person class has name and age. It's really not very exciting. It's some very standard stuff as you see here. In fact, this is all the code for the object. You can see there's a two string method that just kind of packs together all that stuff. And it's a very straightforward object. Well, that's great. Now, uh, we also want to make something that now collects those things. So our desire in our main program is to create some sort of a collection that's going to hold person objects. We could do it in an array, but no, we're going to use an array list so that we learn how to do that. Uh, then we uh, have these person objects that we're creating, no big surprise. We want to then add them to the collection, which we don't have code to do. We want to show them all, we want to show them, uh, then we want to sort and then show them sorted. So the array list will take us through all of these activities, so let's get started with that. So let's start here in the address book program, in the address book class, and let's see how we can create an array list that's going to hold the person type. Now, we want our particular array list to be <clears throat> very specific to person objects, so we are going to use a templated type form where we've seen this in, uh, in a few cases, but not very many in the past. <clears throat> so this is a, um, a, a sort of a new concept. So when we go to create the array list, rather than just uh, saying that it is a plain type like this, we are going to give it a stronger type. We are going to sort of peg it to the person class. And the way that we do that is you put angle brackets and you put person. So we are making an array list that can hold person objects. And the way that we create that instantiate it is no surprise, is new array list. 
capitalized properly and then again we put person now if you forget that and you put the and you put the open and close parens by the way if you forget one of these like if you leave this one out you're going to get some compiler warnings that say you're doing something that's potentially unsafe that your type safety is a little bit in doubt and so we like to create them like this rather than just saying look they can just hold generic objects and we don't even know what's going to go in there it's nice to sort of define them more specifically and say hey look I'm going to put person objects in there don't let me accidentally put something different in there now that's all we have to do to create the array list and now it's very easy using array list methods to go add these people that we have already created to that list and we use a method called add you can look in your book there's lots of uh, easy ways to do this you can add you can remove you can do all sorts of cool things using an array list and add is one of those things that we do we just say hey look just go add this person notice we didn't even have any people before and we just add there's no sizing there's no worries we just add something of the right type and we can do the same thing I'm gonna copy and paste that and a couple times and I'm just gonna add each of these people one at a time okay so here's person two person three person four great so we have added these people to the array list now one of the cool things that we can do we can actually we could have done this with an array but we didn't know that we could is to print these things out <clears throat> we don't have to go indexed here we are we get our minds in sort of an indexed frame of mind when we're working with arrays but you don't need to do that with an array list you have to think of these as a collection and so rather than instinctively having to go to the array mindset the iterating through an index kind of mindset we have a different way of thinking about those and that uses what's called a for each loop and a for each loop says hey look collection thing uh, array list thing you know how to go through your items and you can just hand them to me one by one and that's fine I, I don't need to know their index I just want to do something with them one at a time so a for each loop is great in this case where we just want to display them all we don't care about the index just give us the items one by one and we'll display them so a for each loop looks like this the loop variable is going to be the type that is represented in the array list so we're going to have a loop variable called person one person let's say and then strange notation here but you put a colon and then you put the name of the array list object so this is called address book as you see when we declared it it's called address book and so that is the loop notation now the thing you have to realize is the loop variable is not an index this isn't an index that brings back which person in the list it is an actual person it actually fills this variable in with one of the people in the list so you are handed the person and now you can operate on that person any way you could normally operate on any other person object so for instance I can say println one person and that's going to call the two string method on the person object and we're going to get that string printed out so to show you how incredibly easy that ah okay well yeah incredibly easy that is first when we go to compile it it says wait a minute I've never heard of an array list uh, you gotta you gotta give me a little more information so no surprise here we have to do a little importing and that's in Java util dot array list okay that's a little better okay so compile so that works let's go just see what happens when we when we show the contents here and let's uh, just run this main program and you can see in our terminal window here that yes indeed it did them one by one and popped them all out so the output is exactly like we'd expect it to be so great alright so and we're going to do the same thing down here and I'll just copy and print that we just need to do some sorting before we get down to that part so hopefully that makes sense again this is not an uh, an indexed based thing so you put an object type here don't try to put indexes and integers and things like that that's not how this works for each is a really easy and this is a good way to use them okay so now we're doing great we we have uh, put these things in an array list we've seen how easy it is to add we could remove just as easily etc but one thing we want to do is to sort and let's say that uh, you you look in your book and you see that collections dot sort is a way to do this and so you say wow I'm gonna go try that I'm gonna just go sort my address book and I'm gonna compile well 
it's going to say first uh, I've never heard of collection in fact I've misspelled it it is it is collections right it is a collections method but still when we compile it's going to say I don't know about collections so of course we need to do one more thing java util dot collections there we go and now when I compile does it work oh not quite and in fact you're gonna get this really arcane message where uh, you're not even gonna understand and I'm not sure there is a way to impenetrably uh, you know read this impenetrable message and understand it but there's something wrong here you haven't quite done the right thing and probably if you read carefully enough it's gonna help but uh, there's a piece that's missing here we have tried to use the magic without doing our part so now we're going to jump over and we're going to do that ma that part. We're going to handle our part of it and then the magic's going to work. Now, the way that that works is we are responsible if we want to do sorting, and there are other operations that may require this as well, but if you want to do sorting, you need to implement a specific interface. You need to implement the comparable interface. Comparable says, look, I have an object that can be compared to another object, because if you're going to sort, you need to be able to do that. You've got to compare one object to another object and see which is greater. And we want to sort, let's say, by age, right? We could sort by anything. We could do name, we could do whatever, but let's sort by age. The other thing that you need is, again, this is sort of a templated type of construction. You need to say comparable person. You're saying, hey, look, I'm implementing comparable for the person class. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to implement comparing for a person. So you need to say implement comparable person. Now, if you try to compile that, of course, it's going to say, well, that's great. You're implementing that, but you haven't given me a compare to method yet because that's one of the keys. So we need to go and implement a compare to method. And that's going to look like this, public int compare to and then you need to implement that notice its return type is an integer and it has very specific return values that it's looking for the other thing is when you implement compare to in a class you always 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 pass it a variable of that same class and typically it's going to be called other so you're saying hey look person I want you to compare yourself to this other person that I pass in and I'm going to uh, want a, a certain result and I'm going to know whether it's greater than or less than so that's the first thing you need to implement comparable then you need to, to uh, write a compare to method and here's how it works if you compare these two things and this one is less than that one you need to return a negative number if it is the same as the other person, you need to, to return a zero. And if this is bigger than the other person that's passed in, you need to return a positive number. So that means some of you will immediately start writing if statements, saying if this person's age, so you'll be doing stuff like this, if uh, age is greater than uh, other dot age, right? You're going to start writing all this logic to pass back negative one or zero or positive one. But it turns out if you understand this process correctly, you don't need to do any of that silliness. The reason is compare to doesn't need negative one, zero, and positive one. All it cares about is negative means that it is less than, zero means it's the same, and positive means it's greater than. It doesn't really care what the value is. So there's very often a one line solution here. Why? because integers already know how to compare themselves. Integers, it's very simple. If you have two integers and you want to know which one's greater, all you do is subtract them. So look how amazingly easy this is. All right? Take the age of this person and subtract the age of the other person. Magic, right? It's easy. It's either negative or zero or it's positive. And we do, again, we don't care about the value. So if you are writing compare to's and you're writing complicated logic, think about it because I bet most of the underlying data types that you would be wanting to compare in here are going to know how to compare themselves. 
That includes strings, that includes integers, doubles, etc. So very often this is so simple, this code, that you write in compare to. Now, typical, uh, they, they typically recommend that you do one other thing, and that is that you implement something called equals. And again, you pass in another person, object, and you are supposed to say whether it's equal. Now, if you are not experiencing Boolean Zen properly, again, you're going to go try to write some ob some logic. You're going to say, if age equals other dot age, then return true. No, no, no. If you write that kind of logic on Booleans, you haven't gotten to the point of Boolean Zen because Booleans already know how they compare to each other. Again, two Booleans that are equal, it's easy to do this. You return whether or not this age, this person's age, is equal to the other person's age. It's either true or false. Again, Boolean Zen makes this really, really simple. So this logic is extremely easy, extremely simple if you know how to do it correctly. We've implemented compare to. We're going to compile that. That works fine. We're going to compile our address book. That works fine. And then we're going to see if everything works according to plan we are going to see some magic happen. Now, notice, by the way, that these people are not sorted. 35, 29, 15, 35. They are not in order. So now we can go and run main, and we can see something amazing happening, and that is <clears throat> these are now sorted into age order. That's really cool. So that's all it took to do sorting. So what are the steps? What did we have to do? Well, we had to go and implement the comparable interface with the person object, we had to provide a compare to method, usually really simple, often one line. Equals is nice to, to do if you want to as well, and we can do some comparisons. If you want to say one person dot equals another person, this will now function correctly. Don't mix that up with a regular equals comparison, because remember that says, does it point to the same object? That's the same, that's not the same thing. So then an address book to make that work, all we had to do was we uh, in, we instantiated an, an array list again. We tagged it with this person type, a template type uh, construction, and we then could use sorting on it. And we can also use the for next loop as we saw here. And the rest is just magically easy and sort of free. So that's a quick example of how you can use array lists and the comparable interface. Notice we did not declare the comparable interface. It just exists in the universe and uh, and you know we don't have to do much about that. We just go and implement it. Now it may have come in with a with the collections uh, you know import, but I, I don't even think it needs to do that. I think it just sort of comes for free. So anyway, let's get back to this. So we looked at some really useful things about array lists and then implementing sorting on an array list. You can use the comparable interface for other things as well, but this is a, an easy way to do sorting and it leads us to the topics we needed, which was implementing comparable and then implementing the compare to method and how easy it is to make all of this stuff work if we just know these little tricks. So that brings us to the end of this video. It's a little bit long, sorry about that but hopefully a very useful video in helping you understand these concepts. Thanks a lot, and if you have questions, as always, let me know in email or in the forums. Thanks for watching.